Hello friends, Namaskar. In Budget 2023, Government of India has proposed to insert a specific section in Income Tax Act 1961 for levy of such income tax on the income which a person would generate from online gaming. So, as a public at large, you may be interested to know that, okay, what is this specific section? What are the key points of this section? Rather, what are the points regarding the adjustment of the losses, claiming taxation benefits in form of basic exemption limit, chapter 6, a deductions against such income, etc. So, all these points, along with the section, as well as the tedious related provisions, I am trying to cover through this video, my dear friends, today for the benefit of public at large. Let me begin my discussion with this point that what is an online game? And I can say that as the initial portion of my video was containing a photograph of a child, that even children nowadays know what is an online gaming. So how can I elaborate to a person? But still, I being a reader of law would like to suggest you that my dear friend, the government of India is proposing insertion of section 115 double BJ in Income Tax Act 1961. You may ask me what will be the impact of this section that I would now like to put up before you. Under this section, the government is giving definition of online game to say online game means a game that is offered on the internet and is accessible by a user through a computer resource including any telecommunication device. So maybe you are playing that particular online game on your mobile or on your laptop or tablet. If you are doing so with the help of internet, then it is a component which may be called as online game. Now let me put up this section which is proposed to be introduced in the income tax law. It is section 115 double BJ my dear friend in which it is proposed not this standing anything contained in any other provision of this act means you have to ignore the provisions of income tax law. Otherwise, if you want to understand this section where the total income of an assessee includes any income by way of winnings from any online game, the income tax payable shall be aggregate of. So if in one person's income, there is a composition which includes income from online game, then how the tax would be computed on such income? The amount of income tax calculated on net winning from such online game during the previous year computed in the manner as may be prescribed at the rate 30%. So say for example, there is a person, Mr. Akash Gupta, who has earned 10 lakh rupees of income from online gaming. Then on this online gaming income, 30% tax liability straight away would be payable subject to the higher education says, subject to the uh, any kind of surcharge. However, one very interesting point which you have to note here is that the amount of income tax calculated on net winning term is used. So net winning is important. So here when I am calculating 10 lakh, I am assuming that this person has earned in various transactions 15 lakh and in few transactions he might have booked a loss of 5 lakh and therefore net winning are rupees 10 lakh. That is one way. Secondly, government has used the terminology that income on income tax calculated on net winning from such online game during the previous year computed in the manner as may be prescribed. Now what is this as may be prescribed? This is also important for us to understand that tomorrow government would probably come up with certain rules under which it will tell you that okay this is how we are going to compute your net winning. So these rules as and when to be notified once this particular proposed section becomes the law then CBDT Central Board of Direct Taxes will come up with certain rules and according to those rules this net winning of income would be computed. However, prima facie as on date my understanding says that in different transaction whatever profit we booked, in different transaction whatever loss we booked, aggregate of those two items net adjusted would be the profit which would be taxable under section 115 double J sorry double BJ. Further, the law also says that okay, the amount of income tax with which the assessee would have been chargeable had his total income been reduced by the net winning referred to in clause 1. So means the remaining income will be taxable at the normal rate. Normal rate means if you are covered under the slab rate as an individual, then you will be taxable for the balance of the income at the slab rate. Interesting question which may arise from your side to me 
that okay mr bhatia it means that if you are saying that government is proposing this particular section 115 double bj which will be effective by the budget 2023 hence applicable effective 1st of april 23 onwards so if somebody has earned on online gaming income up to 31st of march 2023 was such person taxable and why he should not be taxable he should be rather claiming exemption for such income because there was no provision in law this is a very interesting question now i would answer this questions answers also that tax on winning from lotteries crossword puzzle races including horse races card game or any other game of any sort or gambling betting any form or nature whatsoever for such kind of income there was already a section and which still exist that is section 115 double what this section provides for my dear friend it says where the total income of an assessee includes any income by way of winnings from lottery crossword puzzle race including horse race card game any other game of any sort or from gambling or betting any form or nature whatsoever income tax payable shall be aggregate of how the tax will be calculated on such kind of winning winning which is in form of lottery winning crossword puzzle i give you simple example kon banega karodpati if you participate in that and you earn income there from it is also taxable under section 115 double b so what will be the tax liability amount of income tax calculated on income by way of winning from such lottery crossword puzzle race including horse race card game any other game of any sort or gambling so it includes gambling even at the rate of 30% so how much tax would be payable by that person 30% so whosoever earns say 1 crore rupees in kon barega karodpati he or she is liable to pay 30% tax liability and similar was the provision for online gaming even even till 31st of march 2023 so what has happened new new is that that earlier online gaming was not separately treated and now 115 double bj insertion would mean that online gaming income would be taxable as per 115 double bj yet at the same rate but one at net money and second the computation will be in the prescribed manner by the government of india and here previously also the remaining income was taxable at the normal rate so this is what was happening and what may happen under section 115 double bj now my dear friends let me also discuss with you the proposed tds section which will be applicable on the online gaming income that not only government has come up with the charging section section 115 double bj it is also saying that whosoever is the online game promoter say there is a platform and on that platform a person reaches for the participation so that on online platform whatever will be the earning will release to that person so once he or it will release that particular fund that is the winning to the participator then such platform is required to deduct tax at source with a specific new section proposed 194b what is it i read it for your refer not is standing anything contained in any other provision of this act any person responsible for paying to any person any income by way of winning from any online game during the financial year shall deduct income tax on net winning in his user account computed in the manner as may be prescribed same rule now you can connect at the end of the financial year at the rate in force where from this rate will be coming my dear friend it will be coming from that section 115 double bj which i just discussed with you there is one more proviso in this prima visa you can understand that okay if to mr akash gupta 10 lakh rupees will be paid by that online platform then that online platform at the end of the year would deduct tax at source at the rate 30% however if suppose mr akash withdraws 2 lakh rupees in between during the financial year then whether tds will be applicable in between during the financial year or at the end of the financial year this question is answered in the subsequent proviso which says provided that in a case where the where there is a withdrawal from user account during the financial year income tax shall be deducted at the time of such withdrawal on the net winning computed in such withdrawal as well as on the remaining amount of net winning in his user account computed in the manner as may be prescribed at the end of the film. so where somebody withdraws during the financial year then at the withdrawal tds under 194 ba would apply and later if you don't withdraw or to some extent you don't withdraw then on the amount which is not withdrawn that is your winning on that portion tds would be applicable at the end of the financial year so this is a basic understanding of the tds provision for your benefit now my dear friends i am coming to a very important portion of this video which is to find out the answers to various question and i am not saying that the conclusion which i am drawing here of will be final 
because there may remain disputes amongst the tax experts also on these questions and their answers. But yes, I'll try to share my views and I'll also try to give supporting for such views. The first question, which is very important, is whether such income will be subject matter of basic exemption limit. The prima facie answer mostly would be provided as no. However, a person like me would say that if the law does not deny for the same, then why not the basic exemption limit benefit is also provided to the SSC? In my opinion, it may be claimed unless specifically restricted. So either the government should specifically come out with the FAQs or give answer to these questions. Otherwise, I would suggest that why not the basic exemption limit could be claimed. Say for example, a person on 10 lakh. He says, okay, 2.5 lakh is my exemption limit. I have no other income. So I reduce 10 minus 2.5 lakh. Remaining 7.5 lakh, let there be 30% tax on the same. Secondly, a very interesting question, whether rebate under section 87A may be claimed. If section 87A is not restricting, then in the old regime, one may be eligible to claim 12,500. In the new regime, one may be eligible to claim 25,000 as rebate. So if law does not restrict for the same, it should be allowed. Then whether the deductions under chapter 6A may be claimed against such income. Again, my dear friend, I have read the original portion of 115 double BJ proposed for your reference, wherein nothing is restricted in form of chapter 6A. Then why not chapter 6A may be allowed? Whether losses of other heads may be adjusted against such income. If again there is no restriction, yes, suppose you have income a loss under the head business profession or house property, you want to adjust that loss against the net winning from the online giving. Why not? Such adjustment should be allowed. Rather, I am thinking vice versa. Whether losses from online gaming may be adjusted against other income. In my opinion, if law under section 70 and 71 is not restricting for the same, then why not? Such particular adjustment should also be allowable to the assessee. So what views I have tried to put in are not final. I would rather say that the government of India should give clarification. Otherwise, a beneficial interpretation to the assessee should be probable and nobody should be able to restrict that. Finally, my dear friends, I would like to say or give a suggestion because I also feel that it is that it is my duty to speak about the public interest that online gaming should not be basically entertained or online gaming, you may not be agreeing with me, online gaming basically uh, it is ruining many of the low income profile people also where they are investing even the borrowed capital into online winning just in the anticipation of that someday they will become millionaire. So if that is the greed, somebody should certainly restrict himself, herself from online gaming participation. Being a charter accountant, my duty was certainly to explain the taxation aspect. But being a, I can say, citizen of India, I generally dishearten the people from participating into online gaming where it involves money, where it involves earning of the income, possibility of earning of income because Many a time I have seen people losing money. So that is a suggestion from my side, may be adopted, may not be adopted. But I think you would have found the content of this video useful to you. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.